This is part two of a four part video series on how to create this spooky digital landscape on a Chromebook using the website Photopia. All the assets of this image are original. I didn't use any clip art. Um, it was just created on a Chromebook. And part two focuses on how to create the mountain landscape. I want to play around with making a landscape. So I'm going to do File, New. Again, I want a transparent background. And I want a full HD um, document, but I want 300 DPI because I might want to print it later. So I want the transparent background, and now I'm going to hit Create. And your next step is you want to make a, a landscape. Now, if you just go to, I'm just going to go to my blog, The Help Floor Teacher. And I'm going to go to um, Atmospheric Perspective. Okay. okay, so what is Atmospheric Perspective? Um, if you look here, you can see how the mountains get lighter and lighter and lighter as they go back and they kind of take on a bluish cast. Um, and you can see this is something, if I take a black and white version of this picture, you can see how the it just gets lighter. But if the sun's out um, and you've got the blue sky reflecting off of the dust particles in the atmosphere, um, things that are farther away will take on a bluish cast. Um, so... This, in this case, it's very bright down here. There's a lot of detail. Things get fuzzier as they get farther away. They fade, they get lighter, and they also look a little bit bluer. Um, now, if it were going to be cloudy out and overcast, things would just get grayer and lighter as they get farther away. It's only when the sun's out that they get bluer. So in these cloudy pictures, it looks like things are just getting grayer when they get farther away. But they are fading, okay? So, knowing that, I'm going to create a color scheme right now. And I'm going to create a landscape for my haunted house. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use my lasso tool. And I'm going to start at the edge of the document. You might want to just zoom out a little just to make sure you have the entire document in the screen. Okay, and you're going to start at the edge of the document with the lasso tool. And way up here, you're going to make some mountains. Okay, now that doesn't work. You need to have the entire document in your view. So I'm going to do Control Z. And I'm going to just zoom out a little. Okay. Now, I'm going to use my lasso tool. And I'm going to make some mountains that start at the edge. And they go all the way off the other edge. And they kind of loop around off the edge of the paper. And inside here, where I've selected this area, I'm going to create a gradient. And that gradient is going to be, um, let's see, from my foreground color, I'm going to pick like a of a, a grayish bluish color and for my background color I'll just leave it white okay so now I'm in my gradient tool I'm going to start here and I'm going to pull all the way down okay not bad now my next step is I'm going to make I'm going to deselect and I'm going to create a new layer layer new layer okay and this layer is going to go on top of this one, so it's going to be nearer to me. Um, so the first thing I need to do is I need to make a, a slightly darker version of this gray, of this grayish blue here. That's good. Okay. And I'm going to take my lasso tool. Edit Fill. I don't want to do that. I want to use the gradient tool. Okay. So I'm going to start here and go down. And you can see it's just a slightly darker version. 
Now the next layer, layer new. First of all, let me do select, deselect. I'm going to make the next set of hills. Um, there's my lasso tool. All right, these tools are these hills are a lot nearer. Okay, and inside here. I think I can go um, to a different color, maybe a, a slightly greener color. But I want it to be a slightly darker value, so this is good. I'm going to keep my background color white. I'm going to go to my gradient tool, and let's see what happens. Okay, so select, deselect. Now I've got my, my hills. Now, I'm not real fond of this green because I feel like it's still too bright. I'm trying to create a, a spooky setting. <clears throat> so, what I can do is I can go here and I can do image adjustments and I can actually change the hue. So, you see how it's changing the color? I can also change the saturation, so I kind of like that, and I can change the lightness. Okay, not bad. All right, now. So I've got my atmosphere, and now I've got to make, first of all, I've got to unlock this layer, and now I've got to make one last layer. <clears throat> and I'm going to take that layer, and I'm going to pull it all the way to the back. And again, I want to make a gradient, and I'm thinking of like a night sky, so I'm thinking of like a blue, but like a real dark blue. I don't want it to be too dark, because then I'm not going to be able to see my house. Um... I'm going to play around with that. That's not bad. And then again, I'm going to use a gradient. The bottom's still going to be white. So I'm going to just start way up here and go to way down here. Okay, not bad. Um, there we go. That kind of gives me a nice setting for my... Uh, very nice setting for my... Um, my haunted house. Now I need to make a moon... So I'm going to go all the way up to layer. Uh, actually, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go to my shape tool. And I want the fill to be white, actually. And I want the stroke to be nothing. I don't want to see a line around it, okay? And I'm going to, I want it to be perfectly round. So I'm going to go to my shape tool and I'm going to hold the shift key and the alt key and that'll help me pull out a perfectly round white circle. Okay, now right now the stroke is um, invisible but the fill is also invisible. I'm going to change it to white and there we go. Um, and actually I'm not real fond of the white. So I think what I might do is Let me play around with the fill. I don't really like that. Um, let's see. I 
right, unfortunately, it's not really letting me play around with the fill. So what I'm going to do is this. <coughs> I'm going to... Um, I'm going to take this shape. I'm going to rasterize it. And then I'm going to do image. And I'm going to go to curves. What I'm doing is I'm using the magic wand, holding the shift key, and selecting the entire circle. And now I'm going to do edit, I'm sorry, image, adjustments, curves. Now, I'm not real thrilled with that, so I'm going to do edit, transform, rotate, and I'm actually going to rotate my moon so that the light feels like it's being cast down on the, on the mountaintops. Um, and now I'm going to go to each layer. Let me go to the background layer, and I'm going to use the burn tool. So if the light is, well, let me adjust the burn tool so I can change the size, make it nice and big. And I'm going to change the hardness to make it nice and fuzzy. Okay, now I'm going to take the burn tool. And if the light is hitting here, then it can't get here. So that means there would be a shadow here. Now, the burn tool actually takes whatever color is underneath it and makes it um, darker. So, if the light's hitting here, it can't get there. If the light's hitting there, it can't get there. So, let's see. Um, so, if the If I go to this layer here, and the light's hitting there, it's not going to be able to get over here. Now notice how I change the size of the burn tools so that it's a little bigger because I'm adjusting for the fact that I'm coming forward. Everything gets bigger in the foreground. So if I go to here, and I'm in the extreme foreground, the shadows are going to be just a little wider. And uh, so now I have my atmosphere. I hope you'll join me for part three of this video series in which I show you how to create custom brushes and add the house into the landscape.